The East Coast is filled with rich history. So as a young sailor I was excited to get stationed in Rhode Island. The base I was sent was called Newport Rhode Island Naval Hospital. The Naval Hospital had its own intriguing history. The building that was erected in 1909 was a majestic structure that bore witness to numerous events before finally being closed in the late 1980s as a hospital that performed surgeries. It was only being used for offices for the officers, but still had a small lab, and a small physical rehabilitation area. In its heyday, the hospital was a hub of activity with numerous clinics spread throughout the building. However, as time passed, newer naval clinics were established, and the equipment, while old dilapidated operating rooms and machines, were left behind. As a young hospital corpsman stationed there in the early 90s, I was required to do patrols of the old building. My duty included checking every door to ensure they were locked and scouring every room inside the unused parts of the hospital. I had heard whispers of ghosts that wandered the halls of the hospital including sailors and soldiers from various wars or conflicts, as well as dependent family members that had passed away within its walls. However, I refused to believe such foolishness and thought that these stories were just a way to keep me entertained during the otherwise dull and routine patrols. One night, at about 1.30 in the morning, I arrived at the hospital's front desk to meet with the building watch. I proceeded to check the floors one by one, and everything seemed normal until I reached the top floor. I had a chilling sensation as if someone was watching over me, although everything was seemingly normal and quiet. The hallway was dimly lit by the streetlights outside, but in the center of the hallway, I saw something that made my blood run cold. A red ball bounced up and down rhythmically, as if playing with an unseen entity. I stood frozen, mesmerized by the ball's movements, and then checked the windows nearby, thinking it was a reflection from the signal light. What I saw next was unequivocally petrifying. The signal light flashed, but it was flashing yellow in both directions, as if mocking me. When I turned back to the hallway, the red ball stopped bouncing and rolled smoothly towards me, as if beckoning me to play. It was a bone-chilling experience that sent shivers down my spine, making me think twice about what I had just witnessed. I bolted down the stairs and named my fellow sailor on duty to accompany me in finishing the tour. As we walked, he shared with me the story of a little blonde girl in an old-fashioned blue dress who often appeared on the top floor. Our chief told him of the soldiers slash sailors' faces he would see looking out of the windows, which only made me feel more unnerved. I was relieved to know that I was not alone, but I still refused to go back into the hospital alone while on patrol. As we made our way towards the watch desk, an eerie feeling washed over us and we both turned to catch a glimpse of a figure lurking in the shadows only for it to disappear. The thought of encountering ghosts had left us traumatized, with all our bravado evaporating in a split second. I would like to say we never went back, but as a sailor's being on duty, we still had to make those rounds. But from now on, patrols would be made in pairs, despite knowing too well that the ghosts of the past still roamed its abandoned halls. As I said I never believed in ghosts. That was until I encountered something inexplicable during a patrol in the abandoned parts of that naval hospital. Nevertheless, I got to thinking after that experience. I realized that I was in a unique position to explore other parts of Rhode Island. I became intrigued with the paranormal and started hearing rumors about different places that were alleged to be haunted. One of the places that caught my attention was White Horse Tavern. One late night, I mustered the courage to visit the tavern. It is one of the oldest inns in America, dating back to the early 17th century. It is said that the tavern is haunted by the ghost of a young girl who was involved in a love triangle that didn't end well. As I entered the tavern, I couldn't help but feel an eerie sensation. The lanterns flickered as I walked past the dining room, and a gust of wind sent chills down my spine. I heard a faint whisper in the distance and saw a shadow moving about in the corner of my eye. As I turned to leave, I saw a figure emerging from the shadows. It was a young girl in an old-fashioned white dress. Her eyes were fixed on me, and I couldn't bring myself to look away. She glided towards me, and I felt a cold breeze on my face. I was petrified and wanted to scream, but I was paralyzed with fear. As the girl reached me, she stopped and looked at me with her deep blue eyes. Suddenly, she vanished into thin air. I was shaking with fear and I knew that there was no way I could spend the night there. 
I ran out of the tavern as fast as I could, feeling as if the girl's eyes were still watching me even as I left. I could still feel the girl's presence, even as I left. She had left an indelible mark on me, and I knew that I would never forget my experience with the supernatural at White Horse Tavern. After my spine-chilling encounter at White Horse Tavern, I knew that I had found a new fascination in exploring paranormal places. I started asking around and looking for places in Rhode Island that were believed to be haunted. One such place that caught my attention was the Artillery Company of Newport. With rumors of hauntings for over a hundred years, the Artillery Company of Newport is a well-known spooky spot that has piqued the interests of paranormal investigators and local ghost tour guides alike. Being the nation's oldest continuously operating militia, with its original charter dating back to 1741, this building has an interesting and deep history to explore. After some research, I found out that the Artillery Company had opened the building for an exclusive tour with a series of guest ghost hunts. Supposedly there are over 150 voice phenomena and various orbs seen, and the building was still believed to be an active environment filled with unexplained energy. As I walked through the building's narrow corridors, I could feel a sense of unease. It was as if I were not alone, and someone was watching me. Each corner had a different ambience, some darker than others. The wooden stairs creaked and groaned as we ascended to the next floor, and I could feel pressure on my shoulders as if someone was pushing me down. We entered a small room, and I could not help but feel watched. I saw an orb floating above my head, which then floated towards the door and disappeared. Suddenly, we heard what sounded like footsteps coming closer and closer to us. As the steps reached the door, there was a chill in the air, and I could feel someone's presence. I quickly made my way out of the building, hearing the creaks of the door left behind. It was an experience I will never forget, and one that has heightened my fascination with the paranormal and the unknown. What I learned from my experience was that some places are not as they seem, and we will never know what truly lurks in the shadows. The experience at the Artillery Company of Newport further propelled my curiosity for the paranormal. After my first paranormal experience at the Naval Hospital base in Rhode Island then at White Horse Tavern and the Artillery Company of Newport, I could not help but feel intrigued by the unknown. I managed to explore other places in Rhode Island, but I did not really experience more paranormal phenomena. My service obligations ended and I went back home to California. Life went on as usual, and I continued with my everyday routine. During those 20 years since Rhode Island, I developed a newfound interest in horror movies such as Annabelle and The Conjuring. I was fascinated by the eeriness of it all and soon started to reminisce about my time in Rhode Island. The bug had bitten me again, and I was eager to explore more places with known paranormal activities. One day, my wife and I decided to visit some of these interesting places together. I was lucky enough to meet someone who was intrigued just as much as I was about hauntings and ghost stories. The Conjuring story had always fascinated us, and we wanted to see if we could experience something like what was depicted in the movie. We learned that they had started giving tours in the house and we were more than excited to participate. So we packed up our Jeep and drove to the East Coast to take the Conjuring tour. As we made our way to the location, goosebumps rippled across our skin in anticipation. Our tour guide, a knowledgeable and charismatic woman, welcomed us warmly and gave us a brief history of the house and the terrifying events that were said to have unfolded there. As we embarked on the tour, our hearts were pounding with excitement and trepidation. We were led to the same rooms and corridors as depicted in the movie, and the similarities between reality and fiction were striking. However, we remained skeptical, unsure whether we would truly encounter something paranormal. As the tour progressed, we reached a particular room in the house, where a deep sense of unease settled over us. The temperature dropped drastically, and we could hear the sound of footsteps echoing in the distance. Suddenly, we heard a blood-curdling scream, and my wife and I clasped each other's hands in terror. We turned around, only to see the figure of a woman, dressed in white, standing at the end of the corridor. She glided towards us slowly, and we could feel an icy breath on the napes of our necks. Despite our fear, we stood our ground, determined to discover the truth behind the haunting. Suddenly, the woman disappeared without a trace, and the temperature in the room returned to normal. 
our tour guide explained that many visitors had reported similar experiences in the past, and that the house was infamous for its ghostly inhabitants. We remained in shock, unable to comprehend what had just occurred. As we made our way outside, my wife and I exchanged a nervous but exhilarated smile. The experience had been both terrifying and thrilling, and we knew that we would never forget it. As we drove away, we could not shake off the feeling that we had just witnessed something inexplicable. Over the years, we continued to explore various sites and locations that were rumored to be haunted. Each experience was unique and left us with a sense of wonder and appreciation for the unknown. And despite the fear, we remained committed to our quest, eager to uncover the truth beyond the veil of the living world.